Hey guys, today we are going to talk about nine cards. Yes, nine cards. And instead of doing them one by one, I know you guys love those videos, I decided to combine them in one video. And that will probably be how we will do MTG Finance. Leave me a comment below if you'd like that concept, you dislike it, I am trying to make longer videos. It is obvious why, because I think it's better for the viewers and YouTube really likes longer videos. That's why everyone is making longer videos today. So let's start with Preacher. This is from The Dark, not a set that has a lot of high value cards, but it is a set that has some cards on the reserve list. So that's always interesting to keep, keep track of. So Preacher is a rare on the reserve list and it used to be about five bucks until recently. It's not a terribly good card. Uh, you tap it, you gain control of a opponent's creature. Uh, opponent, I believe the opponent decides which creature to give you. And then you, as long as it remains tapped, you gain control of that creature. So kind of like a control magic effect for a using a creature. So the next card we're gonna look at is Living End. This one has gone up, it has gone up, down, up, down, up, down, but at the lowest point was $2. Definitely a card to keep track of and consider the decks that are, because it's not just the card, it's the entire deck, right? If the deck is hot, then all pieces of the deck will go up. And there's some pieces that are common, some pieces are uncommon, Street Raph being probably the most notable one right now that are that also increase when the deck has more play. So if it's tier one deck, not just this card, but the entire deck will go up in price. If it is not a tier one deck or it's let's fall falls out of tier two, then the entire deck's price will be much, much cheaper. So it's one of those, it reminds me of ad nauseum. Yes, it can be good if your opponents are completely not, not uh, prepared for you with graveyard hate. But if you go bump into Graveyard Hate, it's pretty much a, okay, you won the game. Uh, it's a very fast deck. You're either going to win kind of slowly or you're going to lose from Graveyard Hate. So the next card we will take a look at is also on the reserve list. And this, there used to be a joke. I played during this Legends and there was a joke that this is a 2-2 first strike flying on the reserve list for one and double white. So when we have all these amazing creatures today and we have all this amazing uh, power level, like if we printed this today, people would laugh at it. But back in the day when Legend was around, having a 2-2 two -two first strike flyer, the first strike being the key component here, just having a 2-2 two -two flyer is what you got for one and double white. That was it, that's all you get. So having a 2-2 two -two with first strike and costing the same, that was very, very powerful. So back in the day, this was considered one of the most powerful creatures. And in the old format, 93-94, it is still considered one of the most powerful creatures. You can see it spiking and spiking and spiking just because the creature quality isn't what it is today. Honestly, if we printed this in Amaket, it would be a common and no one would even blink twice at it. But in Legends, this was like the powerhouse. This was the go-to creature if you were white weenie. This is a top level creature you had to play. Next, we see some Adrazi cards go up. Adrazi is a deck and it is a deck in modern. So something that you should be aware of, all is dust. Modern Masters 2015, this card took a hit. I mean, you can see it went down to $5 and now it's back up to 17 esque So All's Dust is very good. Tribal Sorcery, Eldrazi, each player sacrifices all colored permanents he or she controls, which is okay for you because you don't have any. So there is a Grand Prix promo of this one at $35. I remember that promo being like 10 or 15 or $12. And I was like, ugh, this is such a gross card. I'm not gonna collect them. I just accumulated a lot of them for my friends who go to GPs. I forget what season it was, but somehow I accumulated a ton of them. I did sell them super early because I wasn't really into this card. Seven is a lot to play, a lot to pay. 
However, it is very good, and in the right deck, seven for a one-sided wrath effect is very good. So remember, it reads all color permanents, which includes enchantments. That's something cool about it. And the next card we're going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at a few Modern Master cards in sequence. Um, Lily of the Veil. This card was at the all-time low of $65 before going up again. Now, the question here, has Modern Master cards reached a bottom or is this just a little blimp? So because the graph is only a few days, essentially, we don't really see what the pattern is. It could be a blimp. We need to extend the graph out 60 to 90 days, which we just have to wait to see what happens. And I believe this spike is not a not necessarily a spike that uh, will be continued. Like it's not going to keep spiking up. I don't feel like this card will go over a hundred dollars again. And the reason being, people are still opening, people are still drafting. I see sealed boxes and open boxes at my local game stores. I'm not particularly, and there's always that danger or. There's always that ability for them to do a second print run. I put print run in quotations, uh, whatever that means to Wizards of the Coast. And that would really tank the prices just like a tank Eternal Masters. Now boxes of Modern Masters 2017, you can buy them online from a large store for 220. I don't see that changing that much. Next, Pathbreaker Ibex. So this is an interesting one. It gives pretty much everything overrun, uh, assuming this is your biggest creature. If it's not your biggest creature, then you can get an even bigger effect because you're looking at the plus X plus X where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. I did want to take some time to talk about the commander decks, the most recent commander decks. Apparently, there has not been a second print run of them which is surprising, right? Because they are selling very, very well. And we have gotten to a situation where the Ataxa, Atraxa decks, I am told, sell for more than MSRP on eBay, and they do so regularly. Um, the singles themselves are quite valuable, but if you showed the pre-con deck, if you found one of these at your Walmart or Target, if you find one in your game store, it'll be over MSRP, so don't buy it. If you find one at Walmart or Target or Barnes and Nobles, actually I had a lot of luck finding these at Barnes and Nobles, you can sell it for more than MSRP and still make back your money via shipping, like even after shipping cost. Here we also see these Snapcaster Maids go up in price. And I will look at Vernon Catacombs, which is the premier fetch land right now. Or right, it's the fetch land that has gone up more in price than the other ones percentage wise. So Snap is $45, which is a reasonable, reasonable price for it. Uh, it's all-time low was $35 around release. Do I feel like this is a, a bump or what is it? I mean, it went straight back to its pre-release price. But remember, the pre-release price was very low. So with Lily, the main danger here is the second run. It's unknown. It's not announced. They didn't say they were not going to do it. They didn't say they were going to do it. And I do feel like the decision will be made at a distribution level. My gut feeling is distributors, after seeing the original Modern Masters and stuff, they held on to a lot of the supply of it. And then the second print run was really just at the distribution level, not at the printing level. However, all these, all the valuable Modern Master cards, the fetch lands as well as Lily, Snap, have stabilized in price somewhat. But the bulk ones are the cards that are worth less than $5. They continue to tank and tank and tank. And hence, that's where you get the value difference. The difference is not in the expected value of the box. That is pretty much the same. The difference is in the fact that the value is being top-ended or top-heavy now, even more so than before. Verdant Catacombs, probably the most useful of the fetch lands right now due to Death Shadow. Um, and I am interested in seeing where this one goes because remember, it also had a reprint in a event deck. So when you talk about cards and supply and demand, the demand, the supply of this fetch land is higher than the other Zendikar fetch lands. It just is because it has a second reprinting and a 
not a dual deck. What what's it called? Like a an F and M event deck. Oh, a event deck. I don't think we have those anymore. Uh, it has a printing, an additional printing in an event deck that the other ones do not. Yet it is the one with the most activity around it due to Death Shadow. So there you have a very good example of how demand that this is higher supply, but there's even greater demand. Therefore, the price is going up more than the other fetch lands. Remember, the fetch lands are not a mythic, right? So there will be a lot more of these out there than there will be a snap or lily. It's something to keep in mind. Now, the last card we are going to talk about today is Adrazi Temple. And this is one of my favorite ones that you should have saw coming. Adrazi is a very good deck. And you might be like, oh, well, I didn't see this coming, but what can we expect? Well, there's Adrazis in Oath of the Gatewatch that are exceedingly cheap. And Reality Smasher, um, the other one that costs free that replaces some uh, Matter Reshaper. And of course, the best of them all, uh, Thought Not Seer, the one that removes a card from your opponent's hand. You know, there's a reason Vendillion Click is so good. And to get, like, to pay one more for a huge body that can, like, just, like, you cannot lightning bolt the body is very, very good. Uh, so this card went from $2 in 2012 all the way up to $15. And it was around $2 even in January 2016. So definitely a very, very highly interesting card. And the Adrazis, I can tell you this, Adrazi push levels, they are very good. The amount of power and the creature, the, the toughness, the power, the abilities, they're probably the best creatures I've seen in Magic so far. And I don't see them pushing the boundaries to make even better creatures. I just don't see that happening. So as a long-term speculation, most Adrazis will be very good, especially uh, Reality Shape, uh, Reality Smasher, Matter Reshaper, and Thought Not Seer. They're all they are going to be very, very good long-term wise. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions and leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.